Hey everyone, and welcome to another Python tutorial. In this video, you're gonna learn how to load Python modules dynamically from your Python applications. And this can be handy if you're trying to build a plugin system or basically wanna make your application configurable so that uh, based on a string setting, your application will load a different module and then execute it as a plugin. So I know this sounds very abstract. Um, so I want to show you a simple example here. Uh, imagine you're working on an application that includes different plugins that uh, can be dynamically activated. So um, for example, maybe you have something like this in there where you can go from plugins, import uh, my plugin, and then, you know, we've imported that module and we can do something interesting uh, with it. So we can call an example function and uh, do something with that. Now, um, this is pretty static, right? Uh, if I wanna import a different module here, maybe I wanna import um, my plugin two. If I wanna do that, I have to change the Python code. You want to make it so that your user can just change a configuration setting and then you will dynamically import a different class. Or maybe the user can even add new plugins to a file that uh, maybe you didn't ship with the application and they could still be dynamically loaded. So the question here is how do you modify this code so that you can do something like this, right? Instead of actually using the uh, import keyword here, how can you make it so that I can, you know, this is pseudocode now, but imagine this this was fully fleshed out. Um, imagine we wanted to do something like this and then do this, right? Where we, we wanna import the actual plugin that's specified in this config variable. Now, if I, if I try and run this code, this wouldn't work because it would always try to import plugin name. And, and really plugin name would be um, a string like this that would then say uh, my plugin or uh, you know plugin 2.0 or something like that. How can we do this? Um, certainly we can't do it with the import keyword, but there's still a way to implement this functionality. And this can be highly useful if you're trying to build an application that is user configurable. Or if you imagined instead of this plugin name coming from a config variable, what if we just looked into a specific folder and then tried to load those files? So, so how do we make this work? This is what this tutorial is about. So let's get started. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start fleshing out the application. So I've already created an empty folder here that I can work with. This is where we're gonna put this example plugin system application. And right now this folder is empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a bunch of files. Um, I'm gonna create a file that's called app.py. This is just our example entry point for the app. And then we're gonna create a new folder for all of the plugins. So now you can see here, we have this app.py and the plugins folder. And then inside plugins, I'm gonna create, uh, well, I'm just gonna create uh, a file called 1py. That's plugin number one. And I'm gonna save that. And then I'm also gonna create another plugin that is plugin number two. And when you look at this uh, folder now, it, it looks like this, right? So we have app.py, that's the entry point for our applications, the main file. And we have the plugins folder, and there are a bunch of plugins in there. And now the question is, um, okay, well, do, how do we make it so that I can just, based on a string setting, I just can just go in and load these plugin files. So we're gonna build up a very simple plugin system here. And we're gonna start by fleshing out one of the plugins, or actually fleshing out both of these pl plugins. And the way I imagine these plugins would work, they would just uh, have a, um, a high-level class that always, always follows the same uh, naming scheme. And we're just gonna make it so, you know, for, for demonstration purposes, we're gonna make it so that we can pass a bunch of arguments here. And then this is just, uh, it's just gonna print out, uh, gonna print out some info here so we have something to, uh, to play with. 
So I'm just gonna print out whatever gets passed in here so we can make sure passing around arguments actually works. And then we're gonna have a method foo that, uh, well, let's call this something else, let's call this execute. And then we'll have the self parameter A and B. And now this is just gonna return A plus B. And then we're gonna copy and paste this for the plugin number two, and here we're actually gonna subtract, right? So you see what I did here? I created these two plugins, um, one and two, and they both, they're both just modules that contain a top level class that's called plugin. And then we have an init method and then an execute method that does two different things. So this here is plugin number one. Let's add a little doc string here. Um, you know, just to make sure you can see what's going on. And we're gonna do the same thing over there, right? And now, of course, the interesting part is, well, what's gonna happen? Let's make sure it's also lint's clean. So the, now the interesting part, of course, is what's gonna happen in uh, app.py, like how can we dynamically import these modules? And um, well, of course, I could go from plugins import one, two, and then, well, let's just print them out and uh, see if this works, make sure this works. So here, I'm just gonna call Python on app.py. And you can see here, well, of course, it successfully imported these modules and we were able uh, to, to print out the module. And then um, now we can go and say um, one.plugin and if we do this, this should actually print out our message here, plugin in it one, right? And we can pass, we can pass something here. Hello world. So, so this all works. Now, of course, this is not very interesting because, well, we just, you know, did exactly uh, what I showed you in the beginning. You just hard coded these plugin names. But how do we make it so that we can dynamically import these modules? So, so how can we go from this to, um, to something like this, I'm gonna create a constant here. So here, I've created a constant and I set this to the name of the plugin. And we wanna make it so that this setting here, it's gonna influence or it's gonna determine which plugin will load. And you can imagine, you know, the string here, now I have this hard coded as a constant, but uh, this could also be loaded from, the, from a file or from a, a UI setting or, you know, from any other kind of source. So now how do we go from having this string here to actually being able to load the module dynamically, calling it executing the, the, uh, the plugin function? So for that, we need the import lib module. So I'm gonna do some cleanup here. So actually let's leave that here. That could be handy later on for comparison. So there's a built-in module in Python. It's called import lib. And it allows you to, or it gives you a non-keyword based interface, um, just a function based interface to Python's import system or module import system. So maybe that sounds a little bit confusing. Um, let's just let's just see what we can do with that. So with import lib, you can go and you can say, well, I want to import a module based on a string name. So here I can pass it the, the name and then I'm going to tell it that I want to load this relatively to the current folder and just because I get nitpicky, let's also make sure the, the quotes here look exactly the same. So let's load this dynamically. And what this will do, it, it returns a handle for this module, right? So let's actually get all of this stuff out of the way. And we're just gonna print the plugin module and see what happens. Okay, so you can see here, this had the exact same result um, as importing the module the way you've seen before with the, the import keyword. Uh, but the cool thing now is that I can toggle around uh, or I can just change the setting and when I run the app again, it's gonna load a different module. So this is pretty close to what we want already. And um, now we can flash it, flush it out a little bit further, right? So now we have a way to dynamically import these, 
these uh, plugins based just on a string name or like a string reference to them. And, and now we're gonna flush out this, um, this plugin system a little bit more. So typically, and this is, you know, this is where this part comes in. And this is why I've named these classes in exactly the same way and gave them the same interface. So what I can do now is I can say, well, okay, the actual plugin class is our, comes from our dynamically loaded plugin module. And uh, then we need to in initialize the plugin module. You know, we're just gonna give it some arguments here. And you could, of course, uh, pass it whatever you wanted. So let's do this. And then we've instantiated the, the actual plugin class. So when I run this, we've initialized this plugin here. And now each of those plugins also has an execute method. Well, that, you know, it does something semi-interesting just for, for example purposes. So here I can go in and I can say plugin execute, um, let's go five and three, and then well, let's store this in the variable and then we're just going to print the result, right? Okay. So now we've uh, got this little test bed here. So now when I run this app, it did load plugin one from plugin slash one PY. And then the result of that execute operation was eight. Now, if we load a different plugin, we're hopefully going to get a different behavior. All right, so here the result of the same code uh, was actually two because the plugin two, well, it does this, it does A minus B instead of A plus B. So, you know, this is mainly just for illustration purposes, but really if you're trying to write a plugin system using Python and you wanna make it dynamic so that you don't have to code up all of these different um, import statements, but you can just have a user configurable string uh, in a config file somewhere, you know, wherever this comes from, and you can just dynamically load these uh, modules. That's how you would do it. And you could do the same, you could use the same technique here with this import lib um, module. You could use the same technique to actually enumerate all of the potential plugins inside a folder and then try to load those dynamically. And that way you could make your application user extensible, right? So users, if they're skilled programmers, or maybe if they're just skilled users and they get the uh, the plugin from somewhere else, they just need to copy it to a folder and they can extend your application that way. And what this, what this uh, video also touched on was the necessity for you to have a a very clear interface for these modules, right? So here we had this kind of common plugin interface where, well, the plugin cl classes, they were both called plugin. Um, we have them here. And the, uh, the, the, both of these classes, they had uh, an execute method that I was able to call here. And that way I was, I was able to seamlessly switch between these two plugins and it would do different things. Now, of course, you know, they're not doing very interesting things, but if you imagined, um, you know, the, the sky's the limit here, you could, you could, provide all kinds of different implementations um, and do, do all kinds of interesting things here. So this is mainly for illustration purposes. So before you go, I wanna show you a little example where this can be handy. So this is a project that, um, well, at this point uh, that I worked on a long time ago, more a side project. So I built a Raspberry Pi based uh, internet radio. I was using this uh, LCD display and um, it was all written in Python. Uh, it's called Pi Radio. And uh, this thing allowed you to dynamically load different drivers for the LCD. So um, yeah, so basically what I did here is I used the exact same technique. So um, you can just browse through the code here and uh, there's a, an LCD driver that um, uses the exact same method here where we have a bunch of strings that specify which driver to load. And this can come from a config file and then we're using import lib import module to try and load the driver and so this gives a lot of flexibility and um, it's uh, not you know always strictly necessary to introduce a plugin system into your into your applications of course but um, if you want to do it this is a pretty good way to implement it in Python
All right, so I hope this was helpful. If you want more free Python tutorials, then check out my YouTube channel and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Happy Pythoning and talk to you soon.